my dad did. My dad was into T's. And that's what, I guess, starts all of us, I guess. If you really like Model T's, you'll learn to deal with them. I've been in this my whole life. This car single-handedly took the United States from horsepower to machine power. Recently, more than 950 car owners and thousands of enthusiasts gathered to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Henry Ford's greatest legacy, the Model T. Using a moving assembly line, Henry Ford revolutionizes the automobile manufacturing process, building the Model T in one-tenth the time of conventional hand-built cars. His hope? is to make the horse and buggy a thing of the past. Production on the Model T began in 1908, continuing for 19 years with the same basic mechanical design and 20 horsepower engine. <laughs> At a cost of $950, it represented affordable freedom for thousands of American families, from city folk to farmers and everywhere in between. Well, the Model T put the American on wheels. Adding to the visual history of this gathering of antique autos were the vintage airplanes landing in succession the longest grass airstrip in the United States. This event marked the largest gathering of operational Model T's in many decades. It came from all over North America. Usually when you go to antique car shows, you know, there's three or four Model T's or at the bigger ones you might see a dozen or so or you know, 18, but not this many. This is, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I've had this car for 52 years. I bought it for two, 200 bucks in El Monte, California. It's when they were actually building the freeways and they raised them up and I saw this thing in the backyard and I went down there and the guy sold it, so. Yeah, it was kind of dirty and everything. It had been sitting around for years, you know. I've had this thing in, in different states of repair over the years, you know. But, for the show, I actually cleaned it up. It's not restored. It just looks good, you know. It's a 22 uh, Touring, and it's uh, early, or actually, it's a late 22, and uh, it's, 23, it's about the 23 body, body style. And it's just a lot of fun. My dad used to drive on the mail route. So this belonged to my great-grandfather, who delivered the mail in Sudbury, Mass, from uh, 1923 until 35, and uh, he just put it in the barn when they were done, like good Yankees, and um, my dad got it out when he got his driver's license, and um, had my grandfather drive around, took some pictures of him with it, and then uh, when I was in high school, we redid the whole thing, and uh, I, here it is. Yeah, we, we grew up in the farm with teas. We had a 25, and then we had 27 pickup. Well, the first lesson I had, really, was very, very simple. We were building fence. I read the start of the car, said, here it is. I got to take it down to his dad, about a quarter ride down the fence. So then we got down there, and he jumped on the fender, and uh, Randy Wharton stopped it for me. That was my first, first driving lesson. Starting a Model T's engine requires using the hand crank, but the size and low compression of the engine means just half a turn to fire it up. But there was no heaters in them either. That's right, but you had air conditioning in the summer. 
our, our kids weren't even licensed to be on the road. Road conditions back then weren't what they are today. It was often left to the individual driver to clear the way of obstacles. Speedster is the early days of hot rods and race cars. You take the traditional car and to get them to go fast, they didn't have engine stuff. So what they did is they stripped the bodies down. In our club, we have our speedsters and our traditional cars. Speedsters, we do a speedster run, which is anywhere from a 100 mile to 200 mile endurance run with checkpoints. And we get out and we run at 40, sometimes 45 miles an hour. And if you break down, everybody's, someone's there to help you all the time. It's just really, really enjoyable. Tees are the epitome of American nostalgia. They represent a time when people were willing to wait a few minutes for life to develop. Well, yeah, they're drying up, but I still hold them that way because you leave your fingerprint on them. This is Paul's here. People come from all over the country to work at the Highland Park Ford plant in Detroit, Michigan, earning a royal sum of $5 a day. This modern manufacturing facility runs three eight-hour shifts, producing Model T automobiles around the clock, providing much-needed income for many American families. Uh, once you get it in your system, it, you just get the fever, and you just got to keep getting more and more. And... Model T's today are a symbol of individuality, a great source of pride for their owners. I had 1909 Model T Ford Roadster. Yeah, the early uh, horseless carriages used this uh, seat. But most of the time, the owner let the chauffeur drive. But if the owner decided to drive his big, important car, the chauffeur sat in. Uh, more commonly called the mother-in-law seat roadster with the single seat on the back of the car. It's a 1925 Model T Touring. It's all original, the original 22 horsepower engine and such. It's been a frame off restoration, but all to original specifications. The Model T is more than just a touring car. It's a tinkering car. And sometimes the tinkering gets a little out of hand. They say every Model T takes on the personality of its own. Many a man is bonded over the clink of tools under the hood of the Model T. Oh, I'm sure we got plenty of guys here to fix it. And with a little determination, a pair of pliers, and some elbow grease, pretty much anything can be fixed. But the way this is drilled, it may not be. That, that's wrong. Who moved that? Well, I turned it around oh, because yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't running the other way. And every that's, breakdown that's is an opportunity to share your wisdom about tees. That's going to drive me crazy until I figure out where the noise is coming from. I can drive it, but I can't fix it. I still put new plugs in it. Hey, what do you do, man? Of course, luck is also a tool for many T owners. That was, that was excellent. <laughs> 25 touring. I drove it here from Bloomington, Indiana, which is 125 miles. Drove it here Sunday, four and a half hours, about 35. This car single-handedly took the United States from horsepower to machine power. You could buy a Model T for about the same cost of a team of horses and a wagon. 
And when you didn't need the Model T for a month, you put it in a barn and you didn't have to take care of it. 20 horsepower, four to one compression, original engine. It's made to run on 50 octane gasoline, so the gas that we use today is perfectly fine for it. All gravity, uh, all work by nature. Coolant is called thermal siphoning. Hot water goes up, cold water goes down. Simple design, and they just keep on going no matter what. Well, for the most part, they keep on going. The Model T does have its quirks, but you're never too far from a second opinion and a helping hand. Back in, I think it was back about uh, 17, we drove the uh, Model T down to Oklahoma and Texas to see my uncle there. It was, it was pretty nice. We didn't have any trouble hardly at all. In Missouri, well, they, they had a rainstorm and the ruts got real deep hit you know, on the road. And uh, my dad says, we have to stay out of that ruts or we'll get stuck. <laughs> The Model T was nothing if not resilient. In its 19 years of manufacture, nearly 15 and a half million Model Ts rolled off the line. Its maneuverability would rival any modern ATV. Most every towns had uh, gas stations there. You had to sort of watch those for between. 24 Model T Ford, the 's a vintage trailer but uh, I don't know who manufactured it I did add the Conestoga top to make it nicer for camping in just on my way back from Alaska we drove the Dempster highway and, and all over Alaska with it the trip to Alaska and back we were seven weeks be before we got back home from Iowa City Iowa to uh, Inuvik, which is the farthest north you can travel in, in the Northwest uh, uh, Territory, uh, Yukon Territory. It's on the Dempster Highway, which is almost a 500 mile gravel road. Uh, there's one gas stop in the middle of 250 miles, so you got to make sure you have extra gas. Drove the Dalton Highway, but only to the Arctic Circle because we had a bearing that had gone out in our trailer. Average speed is 33.5 by GPS. Uh, on a good day, flat ground, no headwind or tailwind, uh, I'll be in the low to mid 40s. Start going up a grade, it slows you down a little bit. Go, start going downhill, you might find yourself doing 50. This trip, I've only been getting around 14. I've got as high as 20, but we just had, we weighed 3,840 pounds and we scaled in with all our gear and food. A lot of time to think and, and a lot of time to look because, you know, you're just traveling slower, uh, but uh, it's just real fun being able to see what you're driving by rather than seeing a blur. When production first began, Ford famously said, you could have any color you wanted as long as it was black. Over the years, that has certainly changed. hum of these early automobiles evokes today a sense of joy for life and all its simple pleasures. Started 
back um, with headlights and uh, you used to crank them by hand, you know, and uh, then they put starters in them so that they could, uh, everybody could drive them, women could drive them in, you know. <laughs> My colors are, these are my favorite colors, and it took a lot of persuasiveness to get my dad, you know, to, to accept it. And it's a 27 Speedster, 1927 Speedster, and dirt track racer. The dirt racers were put together cars from other pieces, and so um, how they would do that, is they could paint them in whatever colors they wanted to. And when you think about the painted ladies of Victorian houses and all the bright colors that they used, these are historically accurate colors that were available at that time. So she, these were her favorite colors, and that's why we picked them. I took it on dirt track once, and it was when I was first learning how to drive, and so I didn't go very fast, but my brother took it, and he was racing it around. My brother's got a car down a couple more called the General T, and my dad's got a real pretty, um, um, fully restored, you know, original um, 15. My dad is very into teas. I mean, I've always, I've been in this my whole life. The Model T was built to traverse every conceivable road condition. From open field to muddy country paths to the more sophisticated surfaces of the burgeoning cities. Participants in this historic gathering assembled for a parade through the streets of downtown Richmond to the delight of the many onlookers. <laughs> Riding in a Model T was always an event <laughs> and was often the high point of any family outing. Yeah, oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Right, well, it might be. Thing that would happen in Richmond. The Model T was back then and is today synonymous with adventure, capturing the spirit of the open road and all the freedom it has to offer. It's a 1915 Speedster, Ford Speedster. It's all built up out of a bunch of parts, and it was a pretty bad day when it started. So it took me a year to do what it is now. I added the top this year, my wife's request, keep her out of the sun. We've got like 1,600 miles on the car so far. It was great yesterday until it started to rain. And, and, the, <laughs> and the bugs out on the... The bugs around the, the corn Around fields. the corn, there are a lot of bugs, and I don't have a windshield. Got to keep my mouth shut. That's exactly why you did it. Found it in the barn, been sitting for 60 years. Hold out this year. It's an old uh, Franny overhead cam supercharged dirt car. It's an 88 inch dirt car. They would have raced it in the late 20s, early 30s. Model T engine, Model T frame. It's a Model T based car. I found this in a barn in Chicago. I saw it there maybe 15 years ago and the guy the grandson didn't want to sell it, and uh, finally he did. But he didn't know anything about it. My dad did. My dad was into teas. And that's what, I guess, starts all of us, I guess. 
My car is a 1915 Ford two-man race car, and it's equipped as the last race in 1920, which means the newest part on the car is 1920. Uh, we drove it out here from California, from Hayward, um, six and a half days. And, and my wife needs the congratulations more than I do because, yeah, she was in the passenger seat all the way. 2,500 miles. The car will do over 100 miles an hour. Uh, we cruised out here. Car number 20 uh, was with us, driving with us, and he has a more of a stock engine car. So uh, we, our cruising speed was 50, 55 all the way. We came out Highway 36 from uh, Denver. That was, Prior to Denver, we were on 70 to get over the Rocky Mountains, and then prior to that, we were on 50 going across Nevada, the loneliest highway in the world, or whatever they call it. <laughs> but two-lane roads, great, just great. Well, normally, 15 to 18 miles a gallon, that's normal. I hate to say this, because people think I'm a liar, I got 30 miles a gallon, I've never gotten 30 miles a gallon in a Model T, never in my life. But I finally, after about the fifth gas stop, and everybody else was stopping before me, I just finally calculated, and I said, I'm getting 30 miles. I can't believe that. Uh, raindrops sting. I can't imagine what hail would do, because I've never driven in hail yet. But the raindrops sting. But, uh, but the good side is you get wet, and a half an hour later, you're dry, because you're out there in the wind, and everything you know dries up. And we were lucky all the way out. We never hit any rain. So, uh, and the only planning I did for that was I planned to get at the Rocky Mountains in the morning so we could go over them in the morning rather than chance an afternoon thunder shower. I have no lights, so uh, that's the way race cars were. And uh, so we drive sun up to sundown, but we usually start at about seven in the morning and we'd, we'd kind of uh, cash in about six, 6.30 in the evening. Well, first off, it's a piece of Americana. I mean, everybody in the old days had a Model T because they were inexpensive, easy to maintain. Uh, any poor man could afford a Model T. And so I, I love the era, not just cars, but uh, cars are part of the era. But I love the era, and if you love the era, you got to have a Model T. You can have other antique cars, but you got to have a Model T. Everybody had one. And you can't help but love a Model T. Well, you either love it or hate it. If you're not a Model T person, if you're just an antique car person, Model T's are not for you, because they're unique. But if you're a Model T, if you really like Model T's, you'll learn to deal with them, and uh, they're, they're just, they're cute, they're a lot of fun. The Model T revolutionized transportation in this country, and became a cherished piece of Americana. It's one automobile sure to live on in the hearts of those who collect and maintain them well into the next century. Henry Ford was a visionary whose insight paved the way for one of the world's most enduring automobiles, the Model T.